The Megalodon is thought to be a legendary prehistoric shark still out there roaming the oceans as one of the mightiest sea monsters out there. But there's always a bigger fish. What do you think is the scariest thing out in the water? Hey there my little ghouls and goblins, I'm Taylor, let's strap on our boots and come aboard the gangplank and head out to sea where we take a look at the top 5 deep sea creatures that would defeat the Megalodon. Number 5. The Kraken over the port side, boys! Star she blows! Butter down the hatches! The Kraken's there! I'm sorry, I absolutely could not resist. I'm just trying to paint you a picture of the scene here. The Kraken is an absolutely legendary sea monster, harking back to old sailor's tales from the 17th century. It started as an old Nordic legend and was said to haunt the waters from Norway through Iceland. But as its legend grew, stories of the Kraken would be passed throughout the world carrying on from sea to shining sea. It's widely theorized that the legend of the Kraken began with sightings of the colossal squid, a creature almost as mythical as the Kraken itself. An old fisherman's tale, it's depicted as a colossal cephalopod, capable of crushing a fully stacked galleon with its tentacles and bringing it down to the ocean floor. If the tentacles and its heaving beak aren't enough, it also creates whirlpools around it, as it drags your doomed ship down with it all the way down to Davy Jones's locker. The Kraken probably has one of the best PR agents in the sea monster community, being the subject of stories, songs for centuries, finding its way into numerous movies, a career making role in Clash of the Titans, a very strong supporting role in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise really helped elevate it to stardom, even finding its way into a bunch of video games over the years, serving as a boss for players in God of War, Sea of Thieves, and for the real OGs out there, RuneScape as well. When it comes down to who could defeat who, it's not even a question. The Megalodon wouldn't get so much as 30 seconds with the Kraken. The Kraken of lore was crushing ships in seconds. You think it's even going to notice crushing a shark? Number 4. The Loch Ness Monster now, The Loch Ness Monster is probably the most famous sea creature of all time, and probably one of the most famous Scottish things of all time, alongside William Wallace, Kilts, and Haggis. It's also one of the world's oldest recurring cryptid stories, with the first reports of Nessie going all the way back to the year 565. And since then, Nessie has delighted cryptozoologists the world over, becoming a cultural icon for Scotland and the Loch Ness as a whole. There's been several, several concentrated efforts to really find the Loch Ness Monster over the years. And while nothing has ever officially shown up on a sonar or a radar, that has never stopped the stream of sightings and photos of the Loch's gentle giant. Nessie seems pretty benevolent. There's never been a story or an allegation of the Loch Ness Monster eating or hurting anyone, usually just sticking its cute little head out of the water for a quick little blurry candid to be discussed and analyzed for years. Let's talk serious for a second here. In the ring, squaring up in a 1v1, I've absolutely got Nessie over the Megalodon, easy. That long neck is going to wrap around the Meg, get that thing lassoed. You know, the Meg is big, sure. But the Loch Ness Monster clearly has some stealth capabilities. I mean, it's been eluding capture for the better part of 1,500 years, so I've got to imagine that Nessie's got to know some pretty good tricks for hiding. But more so than anything, Nessie's got the people of Scotland riding for them. You're not just messing with a sea creature Megalodon, you're messing with a beloved cultural icon. It would be like going to war against raccoons in Toronto. The people just won't stand for it. Number 3. Umbozu, translating to Sea Priest, is a yokai appearing in Japanese folklore. It's depicted as a large, shadowy figure looming out of the water, appearing to sailors, breaking the ship as it rises, and demanding a bucket from whatever unlucky sailor happens to cross its path. Maybe it's got a leak in the roof. There's some differing opinions on what the origin of the Umubozu is, as there's no specific origin to its legacy or one tale we can point towards. But it's generally agreed that the origin is that they are the spirits of priests who were thrown into the ocean by villagers for one reason or another, and because these priests have had nowhere to lay their bodies to rest, their spirits inhabit the ocean and take the form of a dark specter, haunting and taking retribution on unfortunate souls in the waters. I'd never heard about this creature until researching it for this video, and I've got to say it has got some fantastic folklore. You really should do yourself a favor and look up Umabozu after. The Umabozu rising from the sea and asking if you've got a bucket for it is hilarious. Like it's more of an annoying roommate than a sea monster asking if it can borrow something. Folklore says the Umabozu would cling onto the hull of the ship and shriek at the sailors, sinking them down. The Umabozu's weakness? The smell of smoke, apparently. So if you're looking to get rid of one, light some sage up I guess, or light something. I'm sure that's very easy to do when you're on a wooden boat in the water. Now squaring up against the Megalodon, this one I actually do feel like it could go either way. The Megalodon, Giant Shark, Umabozu, Scary Spectre, 
but I am gonna give the edge to Umabozu solely because I don't know if it's got an actual tangible physical form or if it's just a shadow monster. You know, Megalodon can't really bite through shadows, I don't think. I don't think that's one of its powers. As well, I could really see Umabozu pulling that little trick, you know, hanging on to the side of the Meg, asking for a bucket, and then the Megalodon, who presumably doesn't speak any languages, not understanding what's happening, gets dragged down to the bottom of the sea, never to be seen again. Number 2. Skyla and Carabitus Skyla and Carabitus are sort of like a wrestling tag team duo as far as mythical sea monsters go. They worked in tandem, hounding opposite sides of a narrow strait of water, and famously clashed with the Argo Odysseus, made famous in Homer's Odyssey. The first beast, Skyla, was described to be a dragon-like creature, having 12 feet, 6 long necks, and atop each neck was a head full of razor sharp teeth. Sailors unlucky enough to pass through Skyla's territory were swooped from their vessel and swallowed hole before they'd even know what would happen. That doesn't sound so bad, you know, all in an instant. There's some speculation that perhaps the original Skyla was a very dramatized account of sailing through an underwater reef, which would definitely provide some explanation as to why a writhing mass of limbs and teeth would be shredding through a ship's hull. But Skyla is only one half of this dynamic duo, the Robin to Batman, and the other half is Carabitus. Carabitus is a little harder to describe, as it has no agreed appearance. In the original myth, the Odyssey, Carabitus presents itself as a whirlpool, savagely swirling around, creating the tides and pulling passing ships into their doom. Maybe it's just a little camera shy and it lets its more handsome sibling take a lot of the front facing business. However, of the two, it could be argued that Carabitus was the more dangerous of the two, as during the Odyssey, Odysseus chose to sail his ship closer to Skyla than Carabitus, figuring that it was wiser to lose six men to lose the entire ship. Very wise guy. Now, the Megalodon. Drop out of this one before you even try. A one-on-one -on -one is one thing, but a duo battle against a whirlpool and a six-headed dragon? Save yourself the embarrassment and just clock out and go home. Number 1. Jormagander Jormagander is another old Nordic sea legend, also known as the Midgard Serpent or the World Serpent, and is a serpent so large that its tail would surround the circumference of the earth and all its oceans and loop back around onto itself inside its mouth creating an Ouroboros. This impressive girth is where the creature gets its name, World Serpent. Jormagander's also had a bit of a star-studded run in pop culture, appearing in Marvel Comics and most recently the new God of War based around Nordic legends. Jormagander is fairly central to Nordic mythology, as it was said that when the creature would stop biting its own tail and release it from its jaws, it would be one of the signs of Ragnarok, and the creature would thrash its tail and the seas would rise up and flood Midgard, the Nordic term for their realm. There are several notable myths detailing Thor's many encounters with Jormagander, and his various attempts to overpower the beast and to slay the mighty serpent, although as the myths go, he was never quite successful. Good for me, because I actually don't think I would do too great in Ragnarok. I'm really not much of a fighter, and I don't think I would do well wrestling any Vikings. It's said that when Ragnarok occurs, Thor will slay the mighty serpent, only to find himself defeated by poison from the creature himself. All of this to say is that as far as sea monsters go, there could not possibly be anyone more powerful in lore than Jormagander. All this beast has to do to initiate the end of the world is to take its tail out of its mouth. The Megalodon wouldn't be able to challenge this thing. It would literally be over before it began. The Jormagander opens its mouth to start the duel, and that's it. It's done. Not only is the Megalon done, but everything's done. Seas flooding, fires raining down from the heavens. How could there possibly be a more powerful sea monster than this? Unless they update the Nordic myths at all, I doubt anything will ever tap the legend of the Jormagander. That's it for me, my ghouls and goblins. I hope we had fun with this one. I'll catch you on the next one.